like freedom time The people have we laid down Rose with dignity Rose up from oppression Rose up from iniquity and shame From the darkness of desecration Checking up around the system corruption Tyranny, violence and subjugation To shine down the body carry deal And strike the right to repress the regime And to pull us politicians And now trembling in their hands Stand up, we lay down Nobody come in and dictate your course of action All of them who oppose your revolution A political band is just like you in your own island Fight for your rights Protect what you have You fought a good fight Protect what you have Don't give in a single inch Don't retreat not even a pinch Don't compromise your revolution Oppressive political scams in the Caribbean No way, never rise The state of affairs in their land You will find human rights violations Total disregard for the constitution Complex political persecution And a wave of sanctions violence With the blessing of legislative criminals And for my sadistic gangs Just like the man who's one Stand up, Grenada Stand up again, Grenada Don't let nobody come in and dictate your course of action All of them who are poor Political scams in the Caribbean No way Never rise No way God bless you Grenada May your freedom be blessed with longevity And prosperous your economy Defend your leaders, wisdom, endurance, and courage to roam. For your road will be long and rugged, many other problems to be confronted. God against corruption be repeated. May that rude awakening that early dawn be an example to tyrant in other land. No power, no weapon, we can extinguish a people's will to be free. Stand up, Grenada. Stand up again, Grenada. Don't let nobody come in and dictate your course of action. All of them who oppose your revolution A political band is just like here in their own island Fight for your rights Protect what you have You fought a good fight Protect what you have Don't give in a single inch Don't retreat not even a pinch Don't compromise your revolution For the scandal of Oppressive political scams in the Caribbean No way, never rise No Ten nine more it be thankful unto the mother, father, creative life force of the universe. Could Zai Muzimu Mukuru give praises unto our great ancestors? Abibi Tumi, Abibi Fahodi, African power and African liberation for all African people. One God, one aim, one 
destiny greetings and welcome brothers and sisters to uh this uh live session that we are conducting this afternoon um the 19th of october yeah and obviously uh for those who have been in tune with the thing um you know over the the last couple of weeks you will know that this this particular session was not advertised yeah but um i felt it was important yeah um to to do something uh, on this day because this is in fact the day the 19th of october um 1983 uh, upon which baba maurice bishop and many others of the grenada revolution were in fact killed executed assassinated yeah and um we have learned a lot over the past couple of weeks looking at the revolution and if you've been uh, studying the thing and paying attention you will know that even though this 40th anniversary of this passing and which signaled the end uh, of the Gren the grenada revolution effectively um was a very sad and traumatic event we have chosen in the midst of our discussion to really celebrate the life of maurice bishop and all those who contributed to the revolution we decided to focus on the achievements and the successes of the revolution we decided to highlight uh the work that was done to make the revolution function on behalf of the people of grenada and we also focused on the impact and the inspiration that this revolution provided for Africans throughout the Caribbean um, and Africans throughout the world, yeah? And so I do wanna thank all of our guests who uh, joined us for uh, our previous conversation, but um, a couple of days ago uh, on Ojima Day Tuesday, um and yeah it was a powerful powerful session you know what i mean it was a powerful powerful session so what we're going to do today yeah what we are going to do today is mostly i'm going to be um playing a speech yeah from maurice bishop um and i'll get into some of the backdrop of that speech very very shortly we're going to be joined by a special guest at some point as well so do stay tuned for that um but i am um, I'm going to play a speech because as you see, the title of the, this today's session is the voice of a revolution, voice of a revolution, Maurice Bishop speaks. Yeah. And so I thought it would be appropriate to resurrect the voice of Maurice Bishop and let, let it get a long play. All right. Um, and the speech that I'm going to play is a very, very important one. It's arguably his most famous speech. Um, and so you will learn a lot about the revolution, um, and from his perspective and i will we'll get uh onto that shortly um one second sorry what am i trying to do okay all right i'm just working out some some details in the background here okay all right family we're going to get into that shortly yeah but um before we do so i wanted to have a brief uh conversation with my father who has just joined us um, and we're going to discuss one or two things here up to do with uh, Baba Maurice Bishop and the Grenada Revolution and its significance. And so let me bring forward Brother Leader Bandaka. Uh, Tenda Mwari, Brother Leader. Tenda Mwari, Brother Shakara. Rumbid Zokuna Mwari, Africa to the God of Africa be the glory. Giving thanks and praises. Great to be in service. Katika Uduma. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Tenda worry. It's it's um it's it's good for you to be here, brother leader, on this day. Yeah. Um a very a very sad day in many respects. Yeah. Um but in saying that we are celebrating the lives of some very powerful people, um, and in particular the life of the Prime Minister of Revolutionary Grenada, Baba Maurice Bishop. Yeah. Um and um I'm, what I'm going to do, Brother Leader, I'm going to do two things today. First of all, allow the listeners to get an idea of uh, 
the influence of Maurice Bishop on yourself personally. And then the second thing I'm going to do is just give an insight, because we are Gaviites, and just give an insight on the level of inspiration that the Grenada Revolution uh, received from the Gavi movement and Papa Gavi himself from the words of Maurice Bishop himself, yeah? Um, and so, yeah, first and foremost, just um, provide us some, some idea of how you got to know about Maurice Bishop and the Grenada Revolution. Why do you think it's important for us as African people? So, Tendai Mwari. Uh, well, first, first of all, giving thanks and praises, Brother Shaka Rao, for, for your work, for your commitment to the upliftment, the empowerment, and the total liberation of our people and the fantastic work that you are doing uh, on various platforms to continue to en enlighten and inform our people and to continue to provide leadership and inspiration in the, in the battle for the reclamation and restoration of the minds and souls of our people. Uh, Maurice Bishop, interestingly, the implosion of the Maurice Bishop, not the Maurice Bishop, the implosion of the Grenada Revolution occurred in the same year that I mark my coming fully into the liberation fight coming fully into liberation onto liberation road that was the first that was the year when i first attended the pan african congress movement modern day sunday meetings that used to occur at 25 west green road uh where the headquarters of the pan african congress movement was and where they also ran a shop counting my years on Liberation Road in a serious way, uh, the time, coinciding with the time I started attending the meetings of the Pan-African Congress movement. And that was in the year so-called uh, 19 and importance and the value of, well, I became familiar, properly familiar with the name Maurice Bishop. And of course, naturally took an interest in what the significance of the Grenada Revolution was and the, impl the implications for African people uh, for the implosion of the Grenada Revolution. And that um, was, that registered at a very early stage as a serious, serious blow to the, the African mm -hmm. World Revolution. Because what was clear was that the Grenada Revolution had inspired the entire global Pan-African movement in a very, very powerful way. Mm -hmm. Such a small country, 134 square miles, a population of tinkering on 100,000 uh, African people rose up, uh, threw off the yoke of neo-colonial oppression, commandeered the, uh, the machinery of state and began to run a state uh, of our own in our hands and demonstrate to the African world what can be done was a powerful, powerful symbol, notwithstanding its size. And, uh, and also we saw the fear and the agitation of the, the, the imperialist, European imperialist world. We saw the, how it destabilized global white supremacy. And so we re one realized even at such a, a young stage on Liberation Road, that mm -hmm. this was a serious, serious blow to the African mm. World Revolution. Tendai Mwai. Mm. Tendai Mwai. Yeah, Brother Leader, you know, I mean, uh, obviously, um, you raised me to know about Maurice Bishop. I was saying to um, to our panel uh, on a gym day on Tuesday that my first recollection, vivid recollection of Maurice Bishop 
was because uh, the, the the documentary Time and Judgment by our now ancestor Menelik Shabazz was on heavy rotation in our house, yeah. And uh, that particular clip always stuck with the state with me. And growing up, learning more about the revolution and what they achieved, yeah. Um, I've I've always been passionate about the need for us to understand this revolution. And I think it was really this this um this particular example. I think this and this and um uh Nkrumah as 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 so-called post-colonial people that were operating in the neo-colonial era that achieved much, but oftentimes the story of, of their life is told by their defeat. Yeah. Uh gave me the conviction that we really need to tell the story of what they achieved. Like we we need to learn some lessons from what they actually did and what they focused on. And I, I know that we've been doing that over Got Kush TV. We've been doing that also on Galaxy Radio. Yeah. Um, why is it important for us to, to focus on the achievements of the revolution and, and not just the, the implosion? Tenaimari. Well, it's, Tenaimari. it's extremely important that we focus on both because mm -hmm. one, one of them, uh, the, the revolution itself a, is a clear indication of our power potential as a people. Mm -hmm. The work that was done, the, the fact that the New Joel movement was able to commandeer the machinery of state in the first place, mm -hmm. when the Geary uh, regime was so oppressive and had the backing of big, bad, mighty America, had the CIA behind it, and yet the, the young men and women of the New Joel movement were mm -hmm. able to operate underground surreptitiously and spring a surprise on uh, the Geary regime that had in, in, in place a plan to execute and wipe out the New Joel movement uh, leadership. There was mm -hmm. a plan that was left with his mongoose um, posse, call it what you will, that mm -hmm. awful death squad that Geary created to, to uh, maximize the oppression against uh, our people and to ensure that revolution is impossible in, mm -hmm. uh, in Grenada. Uh, and yet, Geary having left the country with clear instructions of how and when the uh, the New Jewel Movement leadership was to be wiped out before he returned to the country. Mm -hmm. It looked as though it had nothing to do with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, the of course, the leadership was aware, they were wise to the plans, and they mm -hmm. decided and determined that the, the revolution had to take place uh, immediately and before Gary's return to the country, and it was it was successful. And then mm -hmm. what they, what was achieved between 1979 and 1983, uh, again, is a great example of the power potential of our people, what can be done, the mobilization of ordinary people, uh, the, the transformation that was made uh, in the society, people mobilized to uh, transform the economy, to make the economy more diverse, uh, to make the raw materials of Grenada work for the development of the Grenada's economy to serve the interests of the people, unemployment mm -hmm. uh, increase, uh, food security uh, increased uh, in Grenada, uh, the work that was done uh, with respect to women making women, uh, you know, valuing women in the, in the economy, make, valuing women in the workplace, granting women maternity leave, uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, other things. And also, you know, the community councils that they used to have where the members of parliament used to come meet with the people uh, and, you know, other officials would meet with the people on the local level and the people could discuss with them their concerns mm -hmm the improvements and transformations that they want to see and this part this thing called participatory the de uh democracy if you will uh mm -hmm. this participatory uh politics that mm -hmm. that was implemented in the country that mobilized ordinary people there were youth programs as well to get mm -hmm. the youth 
actively engaged and involved in mm -hmm. building um, their nation. All of that were positive transformations uh, in the nation uh, for, for the better. And we saw an economy that was, um, that was growing, an economy that was developing. Uh, mm -hmm. We saw where the country increased its capacity to produce, uh, to send, uh, to send potential mm. nurses and doctors abroad to, to be trained and to train those at home who could be trained, especially nurses, mm -hmm. um, and to create opportunities for scholarship mm -hmm. for young people. Whereas under the Geary government, it was just Geary's family and one or two lackeys who, uh, who had that privilege. Uh, mm -hmm. That privilege was ex was extended to um, a broad section of young people who were able mm -hmm. to go abroad and pursue a range of, of, of different uh, disciplines of study uh, with the aim to bring back those skills into Grenada and mm -hmm. use building skills. So all of those were very, very important um, development. The impact that Grenada had internationally, the links that yep. Grenada was making internationally, all of that was extremely important. And I just want to emphasize as well that um, the the reason for the implosion of mm -hmm. the Grenada uh, the Grenada Revolution is also an extremely important aspect of the study because so, it, it represents the kind of mistakes that we continue to make as a people. Mm -hmm. And what we are supposed to be doing is learning from the errors of uh, of our history, the mistakes yeah. that we made. So, so that aspect of the, the the history is as important as any other aspect. Why and how did the implosion take place? Ten that worry. Ten that worry. Well, Robert, you know, what, what I want to do now uh, is is come focus a bit of a Garveyite perspective on, on this subject here, yeah? um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do that first by um as we mentioned on ojima day tuesday that the revolutionary government made the birthday of papa garvey a national celebration it was annually celebrated uh, along with things like africa liberation day in may uh, and so on yeah and so i'm going to play a snippet of this speech that if i if my if my calculations are correct was delivered in the month of Messiah, um august of 1981 um, and I, I, I'll explain why I've made that calculation because it, it doesn't necessarily say that it doesn't indicate that I, I'll explain why I've made that calculation after I play the snippet. But it's, it's Morris Bishop speaking in a market um, in uh, Grenada. Yeah. Um, and so uh, let me just play this now. And uh, listen carefully, brothers, this is uh, the words of uh, our martyr who we are celebrating today, Baba Maurice Bishop. <laughs> We must continue, comrades. <laughs> comrades, the comrades before. I pointed out that one of the reasons for tonight's rally, certainly the original reason for the rally, had to do with the fact that we are commemorating Marcus Garvey Day in our country. The comrades have pointed out that Marcus Garvey, when he left that struggle from Jamaica 35, 40 years ago, he was leading at the time an anti-colonial struggle, an anti-imperialist struggle, a struggle that was aimed at bringing benefits to the poor, of Jamaica and the region, a struggle that was aimed at bringing justice to the common man. For his efforts, this Caribbean son, this Caribbean hero was persecuted, was harassed, was prosecuted by the United States government. He was imprisoned not just for his belief, but for his great organizational ability. Today in our country, we can draw a parallel from the experience of the Marcus Garvey movement with our own movement in Grenada. 
We can see here too the persecution of our people, the harassment of our people, the slandering and defaming of our people, the attempt to try to demoralize and confuse our people as we too are engaged now in another historic task of struggling against imperialism, of struggling for justice and for a new day, not just for our people, but for the people of the Caribbean. Today, comrades, as we celebrate this mark of Jarvis Day, it is certainly one of the best possible occasions for us to speak about this great danger, this great threat which our country, our people, and our revolution are facing. There is absolutely no doubt about it at all that the revolution today is in danger. There is absolutely no doubt that very careful rehearsals have taken place in the past week by the United States Armed Forces, rehearsals which undoubtedly represent a trial run for an invasion of our beloved homeland. Tenamwari. Tenamwari. Um, so, first and foremost, the reason why I've made the calculation of, of Mosiah 1981 is because of what Baba Murray's Bishop just mentioned um, in terms of the planned um, invasion, sorry, rehearsals for a planned invasion of Grenada by the American military. And that took place in 1981, months after Ronald Reagan came to power. Yes, they uh, initiated a thing called Amber and the Amberine, yeah, which was a rehearsal um, off the coast of Puerto Rico um, to basically rehearse, yeah, a maneuver for invading uh, Grenada by land and by, sorry, by sea and by air, yeah. And so, but we saw that the backdrop um, to Baba Bishop's remarks was an honoring of Marcus Mazaya Garvey um, and his impact on the region in terms of challenging Western imperialism and colonialism, yeah? Um, are you able to speak to, first and foremost, the um, influence of the Garvey movement on Grenada and the revolution in, 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 in particular? Yeah, Tendai Mwari. Well, I mean, the Garvey movement had a tremendous impact across the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we think about in terms of the uprisings that took place, the workers' uprisings that took place um, in a number of countries in the Caribbean in the 1930s, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that was fed by the energies that emanated from the Garvey movement uh, in, in Jamaica when mm -hmm. Papa Garvey was in Jamaica and Papa Garvey uh, had established the People's Political Party, the first political party in Jamaica and was mobilizing the ordinary African masses uh, mm -hmm. around the issue of fi fighting against uh, colonialism, overthrowing the colonial system, mm -hmm. uh, but also transforming the economy of the yeah. country so that we have an economy that is responsive to the needs and the well-being of the masses mm -hmm. of the people, um, mm -hmm. which means that it, the, the Garvey movement had a tremendous appeal, um, mm -hmm. a tremendous appeal to the workers. In, mm -hmm. Indeed, Papa Garvey um, uh, was organizing on the union front as yeah. well, which was mm -hmm. directly impacting on, um, on, on workers. So we know that the Garvey movement had mushroomed, the, the energies of the Garvey movement, the revolutionary energies of the Garvey movement had mushroomed throughout the Caribbean. Um, and then there was a key uh, activist in Grenada mm -hmm. by the name of T.A. Marishaw. Mm -hmm. T.A. Marishaw was, a, amongst other things, um, a, a journalist, you know, um, 
um, and an, an activist who was also inspired by the Gavi movement. In fact, he was mm -hmm. born the same year as, as Papa Gavi. Mm -hmm. And so he had a lot of a lot to do with the the uh the impact of the, the Gavi movement in Grenada as well, because he himself mm -hmm. being inspired by uh, by Marcus Garvey uh, mm -hmm. also did played his part in raising up the name of Marcus Garvey in in mm -hmm. Grenada. And if yeah. you know anything about about Maurice Bishop and also his father, Maurice Bishop's um, father, Rupert um, mm -hmm. Bishop, we will know that they were also inspired a great deal by um, by T A T A Marshall. Yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and so, as I said, the, the, the Caribbean uh, islands were saturated with the spirit and the energy of Marcus Messiah Garvey and the Garvey movement. Uh, that was just, you know, it was it was just unavoidable, really. It mm -hmm. was such a powerful movement. It, mm -hmm. it was unavoidable. So it, 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 it impacted from a very early, but certainly in the in the 1930s, that is when it really, uh, when it really mushroomed and you had all these workers um, protests and, and demonstrations um and even uprisings yeah, you know you yeah. have the clement Payne uprising in barbados the famous clement mm -hmm. Payne, late 1930s so most of these happened within the, the mid to the late mm -hmm. 1930s and mm -hmm. which had its resonance throughout the proceed the succeeding decades yes, that the yes. energies of those uprisings and those movements never actually died there were still, mm -hmm. you know, um, residues of it throughout the forties, the fifties, coming into the revolutionary sixties. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 yeah, it was what? there. It was there as a source that fed even the revolutionary sixties in the Caribbean. Ten nine one, brother leader, um, brothers and sisters, we're here um, uh, for voice of a revolution maurice bishop speaks we are going to be dedicating the majority of our show today to a speech by baba maurice bishop who was uh, uh sadly assassinated on this day in the year 1983 um and so as brother leader has said it is definitely important that we delve into the circumstances of that particular uh, event but it is also extremely important that we take some time to just celebrate the man uh, and the revolution and the revolutionaries brothers and sisters so we're going to be doing that today um brother leader we are garveyites yeah and uh there are many brothers and sisters who would be who have studied you know the history somewhat that would know that uh there has tended to be uh some debate around garveyites and brothers and sisters of the pan-african movement who adhere to a more socialist uh ideology so to speak yeah and so there may be ones and ones wondering, well, all, all the Garvey at them love, love Grenada Revolution so much, when the advocates and the, the leaders of the Grenada Revolution were openly, adv open advocates, yeah, um, and adherence to a socialist ideology, yeah, and ones may wonder the same thing when it comes to people like Osaja for Kwame Nkrumah and Sekotori, um, and uh, uh, Mualimu Julius Nyerere, yeah, uh, and, and so on, yeah, you know, apparently, brother leader, there is supposed to be uh, nothing but war uh, and discord, argument, fight, and beef between the Garvey element of the Black Power, Black Nationalist, Pan Africanist movement, and the Socialist uh, uh, wing. Uh, uh, how? Why is it that Garveyites took to, the, especially in the UK? Because remember, I mean, you you spoke to it already that over here the African, the Black Nationalist wing of the Pan African movement was very, very involved and inspired by the Grenada Revolution. So why, what's, what's that about, Reverend Lido? Well, what it is about is a, is a common denominator that these are African people fighting for liberation, mm -hmm. you know, fighting for freedom from European oppression, exploitation, and degradation. Fundamentally, that is what inspires all of us across the board. And then we, have, we may have different ideas of how to achieve that. We have, may have different ideas of the, what it might be the most effective methodology for bringing about our liberation, but fundamentally we are fighting for liberation. So these are all African freedom fighters. These are all uh, nationalists, Pan-Africanists um, at heart, certainly Pan-Africanists. Mm -hmm. And then you have the Pan-Africanists who uh, 
because of their intellectual exposure many of them in fact the the uh the marxist movement was promoted primarily through the higher realms of the of of academia many University. of them went to colleges of um of further or higher education or mm -hmm. went to university uh, where mm -hmm. they came across left-wing intellectuals and mm -hmm. were impacted or in you know were uh inspired by left-wing intellectuals of course mm -hmm. there was the russian revolution and mm -hmm. how that impacted uh our people there was mm -hmm. the cuban revolution all of that Mm -hmm. you know attracted our people's interests and not least also because russia had this uh communist international where they had an international movement that was specifically designed and resourced to go yeah. out through the world and capture the minds and mm -hmm. re revolutionize the minds of um of young political thinkers mm -hmm. um in alignment with with russian uh ideology you know mm -hmm. So, so our people got caught up in the vortex of that um of, of that revolutionary movement revolutionary mm -hmm. movement mm -hmm. unfortunately i think it it served over the decades as the decades came and went mm -hmm. and as we move further and further away from the unia marcus papagabi's movement at its peak mm -hmm. uh it it tended to uh push the Garvey movement mm -hmm. and the knowledge of Marcus Garvey uh in the background mm -hmm. and brought Marxism to the foreground I think that was a for an unfortunate um mistake mm -hmm. uh, on, on 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 our part but it's mm -hmm. one that I think we are now recovering from because even I find that many of these traditional socialists are now mm -hmm. waking up or have woken up now to mm -hmm the fundamental value of mm. Marcus Mosiah Garvey and realizing that Papa Garvey gave us the black print, the mm -hmm. template for our mm -hmm. liberation. I think more and more traditional African socialists are waking up to that reality and are studying Marcus Garvey mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and giving more credence to, to the legacy of Mar Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Tendai Mahari. Tendai Mahari, brother. Bringing, it's bringing those two factions, the nationalist mm -hmm. Pan-Africanist and the, the socialist uh, pan African is closer mm -hmm. and closer together, which I think is is for the better. Tendai Mwari. Tendai Mwari, brother Lila. Give, 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 give thanks for that um, e explanation. Um, and so um, we, we, we wouldn't promote the idea then, for example, that the, the goals of the UNIA ACL, Garveyism, and the goals of the People's Revolutionary Government of Grenada were diametrically opposed uh, to each other. Not at all. As I said, there may be some departures in terms of methodology, mm -hmm. but in terms of principle, in mm -hmm. terms of the, the overall, the overarching vision, mm -hmm. uh, there, there are no, there are no differences. Mm -hmm. And indeed, as you have informed or reminded the, the viewers, mm -hmm. uh, the Grenada Revolution Mm -hmm. uh, highlighted the legacy, the name and the legacy of Papa Garvey and had an mm -hmm. annual national observance mm -hmm. of, uh, of Papa Garvey's uh, philosophy and his legacy. So that, go that goes to show that the they, even though they were inspired by socialism, mm -hmm. um, or influenced by socialism, they did not see the Garvey movement as a contradiction to what you know to what they to the method that they were using um in, in regards to the, the 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 new the new dual movement ten nine one ten nine one give thoughts for that brother leader um that there, obviously there, there's more to be said than that but we'll, we'll, we'll leave that there for today um but we we want to thank you for coming through and the sharing this brief word um, on the importance of Maurice Bishop and the, the Grenada Revolution. I'm going to ask you one more question. Today um, is the first time um, uh, what is being referred to as Heroes and Martyrs Day is being celebrated and honoured in Grenada on a national level. And I know that there are some brothers and sisters who come from the revolutionary um, spirit 
who have been campaigning for this in Grenada for, for a number of uh, years. Yeah, now I've heard some some reports from Grenada itself that there's 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 an extent to which this is not being promoted particularly well <laughs> or particularly widely. Yeah, by the government, but it is um, something that has been taken on by the government. Do do you think this is an important step um, for uh, Grenada? Um, and if so, why? Um, and do, and in that context, do you, how would you like to see such an observance develop? Well, Tendai Mari, I certainly do see it as a very positive development. How could it not be mm -hmm. when the, 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 the name of Maurice Bishop and the other revolutionaries of the 1970s are being brought back to the fore, being brought back to the national consciousness mm -hmm. in a commemorative and celebratory uh, manner. Uh, mm -hmm. That cannot be a negative factor. Yeah, uh, It has to be a positive uh, development and it has come as a result of mm. uh, campaigns over decades mm -hmm. of Grenadians at home and abroad to bring this uh, to the fore, to bring this to the fore of the national consciousness. Mm -hmm. So that's a victory, emphatically mm -hmm. a victory. Mm -hmm. What we want to ensure is that it does not, it's not suspended into the realm of symbolism uh, and maintained in that realm, that it, because, that it is uh, implemented in substance and that in time we will see the manifestation of that substance and the manifestation of that substance uh, must be that the elements of what the neutral movement represented the revolutionary principles upon what upon which it was based we will mm -hmm. see the elements of that coming into play in grenadian politics that the neo colonial uh the neo colonial political system that give rise to neo-colonial governments that essentially serves the interest of the imperialist, the global imperialist forces that we see um, a, a groundswell of um, critical, uh, a critical mass of mm. consciousness growing mm. in the people of Grenada that pushes the mm -hmm. political system and the political structure in Grenada to, towards that revolutionary status that mm -hmm. we saw under Maurice Bishop and the rest of the, the, the New Jewel movement. That's what we want to see. That, what it, that is what is essential to the empowerment and the liberation of African people. And mm -hmm. we hope and trust that the people of Grenada who campaign hard uh, for this day, that mm -hmm. they will understand, they will realize that the price of victory is eternal vigilance. Mm -hmm. and that they will not rest on their laurels they will push for symbolism to be transformed into substance can i just say, what? Can I just say very quickly that all when we talk about the uh, the grenada revolution it must also be seen and if that point isn't clear in our discussion yet within mm -hmm. the context of what was taking place in the caribbean as a whole and within yeah. the pan-african world community we must mm -hmm. remember that we must remember, for example, the Rodney riots in Jamaica in 1968. That had a big impact on Grenada. Yeah. In fact, there were mm. uprisings, uh, uh, uprisings in Trinidad. Um, there were uh, skirmishes in Grenada and other parts of the Caribbean um, mm. during during that time uh, mm -hmm. as well. Um, we also had uh, the in 1970. Uh, we had the, the uh, the Black Power Revolution uh, in, Trinidad. In, in Trinidad, yeah. Mm. Uh, we had in 1972, we had the PNP government coming into power, but mm. uh, not led by Michael Manley. But the real, the real substance behind that mm. 1972 victory and that 1972 mm. uh, PNP government were mm. the leftist. Um, mm -hmm. element within the party as well mm -hmm. as the black power element within the party as well as the resurgence of Rastafari and black mm -hmm. power um, in Jamaica as a whole uh, mm -hmm. and which we we saw drip was was um, reinvigorated by the um, by the Rodney riot 
which mm-hmm. resulted, which was a result of Walter Rodney being uh, dis- dismissed from Jamaica, not allowed to come back into the country. Then we yeah. had in, in, in Guyana. So, sorry, Robbie, just, just just to be clear, when 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 we're, we're not um, uh, putting forward Manly as a revolutionary force, no, <laughs> or the people for that matter, just making that very clear. Yeah, <laughs> I, that, that's the point I'm trying to make that there were elements. Yeah. Right, who right, were right, right. Revolutionary elements, black power yeah. elements in the party itself that yes, pushed yes. the party in that direction. Yes, yes. yes and yes. so um, Michael Manley had to countenance yes, yes, that yes, so that spirit. Otherwise, yes. uh, the party yes. would not have had any credibility amongst the masses of the Jamaican people. And then, you, you, and then in in Guyana, you had the Walter Rodney. The, the, let's call it the Rodney movement. Uh, mm-hmm. in Guyana, which we know is, resulted in the assassination of Walter Rodney in 1980. Uh, but I just wanted to paint that picture. We also had an interesting character by the name of Errol Barrow, who was the first prime minister of um, of Barbados, and whose father was actually a Garveyite. His father mm-hmm. was Reginald Barrow, who, mm-hmm. was, um, who had become... Uh, a, a what do you call it um chaplain general mm-hmm. of uh the african uh orthodox church the african orthodox church mm-hmm. in the yeah the african orthodox church so there was that that mushrooming of black power consciousness black power uh uprisings and that that power spirit throughout mm-hmm. the caribbean and it is on the mm-hmm. wave of that that um the new jewel movement uh got its um inspiration and its direction tell them where roughly the good fights I'm, I'm gonna ask you this one more question the, on, the, on the subject of healing i think it's important to, to address healing on a day such as this yeah um and obviously throughout our discussions this summer and last summer this week and last week there has been it's obvious that there is a lot of unanswered questions about exactly what happened on this day um you know who did what and who say what a lot of confusion was then exacerbated by the american invasion six days later um i want to ask you um the extent to which a, 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 the recognition of this day uh in what way can it lead uh to a healing of trauma that not just Yes. So you're cutting in on out, Brother Shakara. Oh, am I? I apologize. Am I, am I back? Yes, yes. Yeah. All back. right. So, so yeah, just as um, yeah, I'm asking what, what kind of day such as this and the, the recognition of a day such as this provide uh in terms of healing um from the trauma of of what happened on this day uh 40 years ago, and how can we use that healing process towards greater organizing and a renewal of the spirit of the Grenada Revolution? Well, Tendai Mwari, certainly, um, certainly we do need healing. Mm-hmm. Um, Grenada represents uh, a wound in the African world community that is very, very deep. Mm-hmm. And, and the effects of which are long lasting, the post-traumatic effects of this tremendous laceration is still with us today. And healing can only come when Ma'at is restored. Mm. And Ma'at is fundamentally truth. Mm-hmm. From truth, we go to justice. So we establish mm. truth, and then we ensure that justice is done. Then mm. we restore on the foundation of truth and justice, we restore right conduct. And when we restore right conduct, then only then can harmony, balance, reciprocity, and ultimately order prevail. And Mm -hmm. so the truth is extremely important. Mm -hmm. There are still a lot of questions unanswered. And the extent to which those questions remain unanswered is the extent to which the, the, the trauma, the pain is perpetuated. Mm -hmm. So, a process needs to be um, undertaken whereby we really explore 
and interrogate the facts, the truth about what happened and establish the truth mm -hmm. and whereby justice is done. And I'm talking about African justice. I'm not talking about, you know, what went on, um, mm -hmm. you know, what the Americans imposed on, um, mm -hmm. on Grenada. No, that's not what we're talking about. But we're mm -hmm. talking about a process that we will manage um, mm -hmm. ourselves as, as African people. But the truth has to be known. I want to know, uh, you know, who gave the order yeah <laughs> that's serious for, the, for the trigger to be pulled i want yeah. to know how 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 on earth could mm. any grenadian mm. any grenadian mm. at that time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how could any grenadian at that time bring themselves to point mm. a gun mm. at a maurice bishop or even a bernard court for that matter mm. or any of the the, the the leaders of the new drill movement and mm -hmm. pull that trigger I want mm -hmm. to know how you could line up a pregnant woman, mm -hmm. as in mm -hmm. Jacqueline Kreff, mm -hmm. how you mm -hmm. could line up a pregnant woman. The whole nation knew that, that Jacqueline mm -hmm. Kreff was carrying a baby yes, for Maurice yes, Bishop. Yes. How could you line up a pregnant woman mm -hmm. and pull a trigger? Mm -hmm. You know, so that, done, so. mm -hmm. something went radically wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and and the curse of that is still with us today mm -hmm. and only by knowing the truth about how how that could ever have occurred mm -hmm. and by by implementing a just response and restoring right conduct so that that cannot be repeated that kind of behavior cannot be repeated among our, among our people mm -hmm. can we really have the harmony balance reciprocity and ultimately order that we yes, need in our lives as a people Ten nine more. Ten nine more. Well, as, as we as we prepare to allow you to depart Reverend leader um i'm going to call the name of those who were shot via firing squad um on that day and after i've done so if you could just um uh, conclude with a word um of power yeah for said ancestors yeah Please, Tenamwari. Tenamwari. Um, so we honor the names, Mojuba, Mojuba. We pay homage to the names of Fitzroy Bain. Yeah. yeah. Norris Bain. Ashe. Cecil Evelyn Maitland. Ashe. Unison Whiteman. Ashe. Evelyn Bullen. Ashe. Keith Hailing, Ashe, Jacqueline Kreft, Ashe, Morris Bishop, Ashe, and over to you, Brother Leader. Tell them why. Tell them why. Ashe, 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 oh, Ashe, 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 oh. We evoke the Ashe, the life force, the life force of the sons and daughters of Africa who were just named as the revolutionary leaders and organizers for the New Jewel, New Jewel movement, who, notwithstanding their imperfections, made serious commitment and devotion to the empowerment, the upliftment, and the liberation of African people in Grenada and inspired the entire African world. We seek to appease their spirits at this time. Uh, sure. What was done should not have been done. We call upon them as we call upon Mzumamukuru, our great ancestors, all of our great ancestors, all of our worthy ancestors, to forgive us our foolish ways, uh, sure. the foolishness, the backwardness that caused us to commit such a dastardly deed against ourselves. What we did to them, we did to ourselves. What we did to them, we did to the revolution. Mm -hmm. And we are suffering today. Grenada is suffering today because of it. The African world is suffering today because of it but we know that those spirits assume 
a greater power in the universe today. So as we ask for forgiveness, we ask you to remain with us and empower us in mind, body, and spirit. Continue to guide us as you guided us in the earthly dispensation of your existence. Continue to guide us. Uh, As you demonstrated courage and bravery in the earthly dimension of your existence, imbibe us with that spirit of courage, with that spirit of bravery. As you exercised wisdom and understanding in your earthly dimension of existence, transform, transfer that wisdom to our minds so we can think freely, so we can intellect on the plane of African redemption, African revolution, pan-Africanism. We honor you. We hail you. In spirit, you will never die. Rumbidso kunamwariye Africa. To the God of Africa be the glory. May they continue to rise like Ra on the wings of Ma'at after a favorable counsel in favorable judgment in the council of Asar. Ashe, 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 oh, Amen, Ra. It is done. Tendai Mwari. Tendai Mwari. Tendai Mwari. Give thanks, brother leader, uh, for that, brother leader. Much, much appreciated. But these things are very necessary, you know. Um, so, yeah, we give thanks um, and do full joy the rest of your day, brother leader, as we honor Maurice Bishop and the martyrs of the Grenada Revolution. Tendai and you have a great day, Brother Shakara, and keep up the training that you're doing for our people. Tatenda, give thanks. You are helping our people tremendously. Give thanks, give thanks. And we are proud of you. Love, Tendai Mwari, give thanks, I'm humble. Tendai Mwari. All right, kings and queens, that was Brother Leader Bandaka of the Akebala Revivalist Movement, uh, also of the UNIA ACL RC 2020. Um, Right, Um, as said, we're going to spend the majority of our time today hearing the voice of our martyr, uh, our leader, Baba Morris Bishop. And this is one of his most famous, if not his most famous speech, delivered, yes, um, in June of 1983, just months before uh, he was uh, to depart our earthly company, so to speak. And just to provide some backdrop for um, what is taking place here, as you saw, heard in the previous clip that we uh, played from Baba Morris Bishop speaking, in honor of Papa Marcus Messiah Garvey, the American invasion, yes, was a hot topic on the minds and the mouths of the people of Grenada and the leadership of Grenada. Also taking into consideration that the previous year, a a CIA uh, plot resulted in an assassination attempt of the entire leadership of the Grenada revolution, okay? And so the revolutionaries and the people were very, very aware of the fact that America wanted to invade and America was making that increasingly clear. And so to cut a long story short, leading up to this particular speech, one of the things that began to take place is that Ronald Reagan and other officials of the American government during this time began to ramp up the propaganda against Morris Bishop himself and the Grenada Revolution in general. And the ramping up of this propaganda centered around the building of the international airport that the revolutionary government was in the process of completing during 1983. And this uh, airport was a significant development within the government and for the people of Grenada for travel purposes as well as uh, economic purposes. Yeah, this, this, this airport was significant in terms of the plans that the revolutionary government had for its agro industries, its agricultural industries, as well as its tourism industry um, and many other 
uh, factors, kings and queens, okay, um, regarding import and export uh, and so on and so forth. But the Ronald Reagan government, the American government, began to push the propaganda that the airport was in fact designed to facilitate the Soviet Russia invasion of the United States of America. That it was designed as a conspiracy between Russia, Cuba, and Grenada in order to facilitate an invasion by air and possibly sea from Grenada. That's why Reagan said that the airport was being built. The international airport was being built. There was no evidence for this. And the CIA's own documentation and reports of the time substantiate the fact that this was a lie and they knew it was a lie. Yes. But Reagan was looking for an excuse to facilitate regime change in the nation. And so what happened is the leadership of Grenada, in particular Maurice Bishop, was invited by an organization in America called Trans Africa, which is a grassroots organization. And part of that visit was also sponsored by the Congressional Black Caucus, yes, politicians of African heritage in uh, America. And so the uh, Grenada, the People's Revolutionary Government, decided to use that visit, yeah, in order to engage in diplomacy with the American government. They were pushing for a meeting with Ronald Reagan to resolve, yes, whatever differences uh, existed and engage in a diplomatic process because they had no intention of engaging militarily with the United States of America. Ronald Reagan refused to meet with Maurice Bishop, President, sorry, Prime Minister of uh, a nation visits your country and you as the President of America refuse, yes, to meet with uh, the president, sorry, the prime minister of Grenada. And, uh, but it began to, you know, become a bit of a, a public relations nightmare for Reagan because questions began to be asked as to why, if the government of Grenada was prepared to engage in diplomatic talks, why was Reagan refusing the talks? And so in order to save face a bit, Reagan um, sent, one of his foreign uh, secretary advisors or something like that to meet, and I forget the, the, the guy's name, but to meet with Maurice Bishop instead of Reagan himself, yeah? And so um, after meetings with American officials and meetings at the grassroots level with activists on the ground, there's a mass meeting held at Hunter College in New York, yeah? Where many, uh, where a, a few thousand Africans, yes, and others, yeah, come out to hear the Prime Minister of the People's Revolutionary Government of Grenada speak. This is a bit of an abridged version of the speech, yeah, but it is also the best quality as far as video and sound version of the speech. Another day, we'll go into the, the, the longer version of the speech because it's entirely important to get the full context of the speech, yeah? Um, and maybe what we'll do is um, we'll play and then read what is um, what has been uh, edited from and probably engage in some analysis. But that's another thing for another day. Maurice Bishop engages in an exploration of the revolutionary processes that are currently in train at this point in the history. He speaks on the plans of the government, the successes of the government, the challenges of the government in terms of forwarding um, those plans and, and, and working with the people in implementing, yes, the institutions and the programs that are being implemented at this particular moment in time. So he goes into an in-depth breakdown of the successes and the challenges of the revolution. He also goes into an in-depth breakdown of Grenada's re relationship with America um, and the American government in particular, and what that meant in terms of global geopolitics. There are a number of noted um, uh, activists from various different organizations in the African um, and uh, movements of other uh, peoples uh, in the global community, so to speak. And so please take note of that. And with that, brothers and sisters, I give the word and the floor to our great ancestor, Marta, Prime Minister of the People's 
revolutionary government of Grenada. The, a voice of a revolution, the one and only Baba Maurice Bishop. Tendamwari. Welcome to Caribbean Inside TV, the home of our West Indian culture and history. I'm your host, Lady V. And on this episode, Prime Minister Maurice Bishop. I should say, let me just honor um, Caribbean Insight TV. If you are not subscribed to Caribbean Insight TV, please do. They have a lot of powerful programming preserving the history, uh, culture, and the political legacy, the true political legacy of uh, our people uh, in the Caribbean. Yeah? So we thank them for putting out this speech and for all the work that they do in preserving our heritage and our culture. Tendai Mwari. This bishop explains what the Grenada Revolution was all about and why the U.S. government opposed it. This is Maurice Bishop's first and last speech on American soil in 1983 at Medgar Evans College in Brooklyn, New York. Thank you very much for that very warm welcome, sisters and brothers, comrades all. May I start off, sisters and brothers, by bringing to you warm fraternal greetings from the free people of revolutionary Grenada. And may I also, right at this very beginning, say how very, very pleasant it is to be back in New York among you, to be in this great hall where there are so many hundreds of our sisters and brothers. That is going to bring a great deal of pleasure to our free people, and I will certainly report your warmth your enthusiasm, and your revolutionary support for our process when I return. <laughs> of course, we are here among friends. But looking around, there are two people here who are right now representing their country at the United Nations, people who are involved in liberation struggles, people who are struggling for their national liberation, for justice, for freedom for their countries, freedom for their peoples. It is very important right at the beginning, sisters and brothers, that we acknowledge the presence of Dr. Terzi the representative to the United Nations of the People's Liberation Organization, the PLO. Dr. Terzi can be assured, as always, that the people of Palestine and their sole authentic representatives, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, will always have the firm support of the fraternal people of the world. The South African racists who have spent so much time inventing all sorts of ingenious ways of oppressing the people of South Africa, the black majority, who have spent so much time in ensuring that those people are not able to reclaim their true patrimony. They are now discovering that in common with all of the national liberation movements around the world that are forced to move to the highest stage of the struggle that the African National Congress is also willing to make that step. It 
in saluting the Deputy Permanent Representative of the ANC to the United Nations, let us ask him to bring back to his people, to bring back to his organization, to bring back to Oliver Tambo, to bring back to Nelson Mandela, whose spirit is here with us. to bring back to all of his people and to his revolutionary organization the love, the respect, the concern, the admiration, and the fraternal feelings of all of us to the people of South Africa. <laughs> Brother David and Gabba. The last time I had the opportunity, sisters and brothers, comrades, of being in New York and addressing our Grenadian nationals, other people from the Caribbean and Latin America, and of course, the people of the United States in New York, was four years ago, as our ambassador to the United Nations has said. Since those four years have passed, a lot has happened in our country. A lot has happened in the world. And one of the reasons at this time that we have come to the United States, in fact, is to be able to share our experiences of the last four years with the people of the United States. We were anxious to do this because, of course, there has been a major campaign over the last several weeks and months, starting from last year, November, with some remarks by the Vice President in Miami. Continuing with more remarks from the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Defense, the Deputy Secretary of Defense, the Admiral of the Fleet, and then the President himself. <laughs> and in all of these remarks and allegations, different allegations were made against our country. And therefore, we were particularly happy, comrades, to have had the opportunity of an invitation from TransAfrica, the organization based in Washington that has been doing a lot of lobbying for Africa and the Caribbean. We were invited to come to address their sixth annual dinner last night. And that was a very successful event and we want to publicly thank TransAfrica once again for making this visit possible. The Congressional Black Caucus, too, was involved as co-sponsors of this visit, and we also want to place our appreciation on the record. Of course, we set ourselves other objectives, once the visit was definitely confirmed. And these objectives included the very important objective of trying to see what we could do to deepen and strengthen the people-to-people -people relations which have always existed between our two countries, Grenada and the United States. At the level of the people, there has never been any problem. At the level of the people, we have always had excellent relations with the people of the United States. In fact, as you know, in some years, more American tourists come to our country than the entire population of the country. And on top of that, there is a medical school in Grenada. And at this medical school, over 700 young Americans are earning their right to become doctors, are getting the career in Free Grenada. So from our point of view, clearly bad relations do not make sense. From our point of view, the need to deepen ties 
the need to ensure that even more American visitors come to our country every year is a critical and burning need. And another objective was to try yet again to establish some form of official contact and official dialogue with the government of the United States. We, of course, cannot decide which government is going to be in power in the United States at any given moment in time. That is a matter for the people of the United States. And whoever happens to be in power at a particular time, we believe it is extremely important for us to maintain normal relations so that we are able to conduct proper dialogue in a civilized fashion. There is a need for some kind of mechanism to be established. And that is why we have been struggling so hard over all of these years to try to get some of the basic norms reestablished. Let us exchange ambassadors, we have said. They have rejected that. So we have no ambassador accredited to Washington because they refuse to accept the credentials of the ambassador we have suggested. When they replaced their ambassador after the electoral victory of President Reagan in 1980, and the new ambassador came out in 1981, he was not, in fact, accredited to Grenada. So we have to talk, presumably, using loudspeakers. <laughs> and even when we write letters, like I did, for example, in 1981 on two occasions to President Reagan, in March and again in August. First letter, short letter, making the simple, obvious point. Look, you are a new president. We had hoped that as a new president, you would have taken a new look at the situation, that you would have been anxious to start off on as good relations as you can with all countries around the world. We had hoped that you, therefore, would have wanted relations normalized. And we went on in that letter to make the point that what we are saying is the true bottom line is dialogue. It is talks. Therefore, let us get these talks going. We are proposing no agenda with any preconditions. Let us look at all questions. Let us put them all on the table. Let us see what you perceive as problems. We will tell you what we perceive as problems let us see if in the course of those discussions, we can narrow down differences so at least the new beginning that is made will be begun on a basis of mutual understanding with less distrust and less suspicion. No reply to that letter. So the fact is, sisters and brothers, we have had this long, long history of trying to see in what ways relations could be normalized of working very hard at trying to get some form of dialogue going, and we have had very little success in this regard. But I really want to say tonight that we do believe it is important for us to continue that struggle. And therefore, notwithstanding the difficulties in the way, we deem it very advisable for us to continue to press for a full normalization of relations. But of course, as we press for normalization, we are also going to continue to build our revolution. We are also going to continue to consolidate our process. In the face of all of the difficulties, in the face of all of the economic destabilization, the political, diplomatic, and military threats and pressure, we don't intend to roll over and play like an ostrich. We are going to stand on our feet and keep going forward. And as you know, sisters and brothers, in these times, 
it is becoming more and more difficult for developing third world countries to go forward. Because unfortunately, our economies remain by and large dependent on and tied to the capitalist world economies. And therefore, when the capitalist world goes through their cyclical crises, one after the other, it has an immediate effect on us. As we say at home, when the capitalist world catches a cold, we catch pneumonia. <laughs> and the crisis in the capitalist world has been deep. In all of the developed industrialized countries, there is greater and greater unemployment. And as this unemployment goes deeper and deeper into the society, the people who feel it the most are the poor and working people, the massive cutbacks. <laughs> the massive cuts in social welfare. The cuts are not coming in the arms race. The cuts are not coming out of the arms budget. I understand the talk is to spend three trillion dollars over five years. The mind boggles. That is the kind of money that is supposed to be consumed in arms. But while that kind of money is being consumed in arms, hospitals are closing down. Jobs are being, more and more retrenchment is taking place. Pensions are being reduced. Medic, medic aid is being reduced. In other words, the arms is swallowing up the money. The people are not benefiting. But the effect this has had on us in turn, countries of the developing world, has been to also create a crisis in the developing world. In the developing world as a whole, it is now estimated that our debts exceed $650 billion. That is how much money we owe collectively. Just servicing of debts alone is causing massive problems for the countries of the third world. Last year, $131 billion was spent on the countries of the third world in just servicing their debt, just paying the interest, not one cent back on the capital. And that took $131 billion. But on top of that, we are also discovering that it is becoming more and more difficult to engage in trade with the countries of the Western industrialized world. But even as they make it more difficult for us to trade with them, the whole question of aid, which at one time used to be regarded as a kind of duty that the developed capitalist world, the developed industrialized world had, if duty it was, that duty has virtually disappeared. Because the reality is that aid has also decreased quite dramatically for third world countries. But not satisfied with all of that, what they have now done after cutting off aid, cutting off trade, cutting off investment, making it virtually impossible to get money through the international financial institutions, now they are forcing more and more third world countries to go directly to the international capital market, to the big commercial banks to get loans. But the reality is that by forcing us more and more to have to go to the international capital market, the debt trap is intensified even more. And while all of this is going on, sisters and brothers, there are so many people in the world who are unemployed, so many people in the world who are going hungry, to bed hungry every single night. So many millions in the third world who are illiterate and whose governments either do not care or feel they cannot do anything to solve that problem. Unemployment, hunger, 
malnutrition, disease, illiteracy. These are the crimes and the sins that have visited upon the poor developing countries of the third world, while the industrialized countries continue to exploit our resources and to keep the profits. But yet, sisters and brothers, in the face of all of that, the Grenada Revolution has nonetheless continued to go forward and to make progress. <laughs> At a time when even the big, powerful, industrialized nations were growing backwards last year, we grew forward by 5.5%. <laughs> the revolution in Grenada, starting from a base from Gary of 49% unemployment, coming from that base, when we did a census last year, April 1982, the unemployment rate had dropped from 49% to down to 14.2%. The last year of Gary, 1978, the capital investment program was $8 million. The first year of the revolution, that figure was more than doubled. It went to $16 million. The second year of the revolution, it was doubled again. It went to $39.9 million. And by this time, the experts were saying, that is impossible. You don't have the resources. You don't have the management. You don't have enough tractors. You don't have enough trucks. You don't have enough engineers. You can't possibly do it. You all were only lucky in 1979 when you double Gary own. And you're only lucky in 1980 again when you double your own. And then when we went to 1981 and we double it again, they say, well, we don't know if it's luck, but something is wrong. You all can't do that again. And then last year in 1982, it went up to over 100 million. And then we gave them the secret. We told them that in a revolution, things operate differently in the normal situation. <laughs> We have been able to make these accomplishments because in Grenada, consistent with our three pillars of the revolution, where the first pillar of the revolution is our people, who are always at the center and heart and focus of all of our activities, we are able to mobilize and organize the people to cut out waste, to cut out corruption, to stamp on inefficiency, to move to planning, to look out for production, to check on productivity, to make sure that state enterprises are not set up to be subsidized, but that state enterprises too must become viable, must make a profit, and therefore the state sector will then have the surplus to bring the benefits. We have been able to pull our people into the whole economic process. And our people have gladly been pulled into the economic process because our people see the benefits which the revolution has brought to them. They understand that when 37 cents out of every dollar is spent on health and education, that means something. In this country, the figure is probably nearer to 10 cents on every dollar. Because today in Grenada, the money that the people of Grenada used to have to spend, for example, when they went to a doctor or a dentist, that money they no longer have to spend because they now have free health care throughout the system.
Our people understand the value and the benefit of free secondary education because they know now that once their children are able to pass the common entrance exam and get into secondary school, they no longer have to worry about finding those fees, which as you know, for agricultural workers, for example, were very often impossible. But not just free secondary education, but in effect, free university education. Moving from a situation before the revolution, where in the last year of Gary, 1978, just three people went abroad on university scholarships. And they happened to be Gary's daughter and one of his other minister's daughter. Moving from that situation, in the first six months of the revolution, 109 students were able to go abroad on free university scholarships. Our people are more and more getting to understand what we mean when we say that education to us is liberation. <laughs> that education is a strategic concern of this government. That is why that this year, 1982, is the year we have named the year of political and academic education, because we understand the importance of bringing education to our people. Following the establishment of the Center for Popular Education program in early 1980, within one year of the work of the CPE program, the illiteracy figure in Grenada was reduced to 2% of the entire population. The people understand that in areas, in all areas of their basic needs, real attempts are being made to solve these problems. Two and a half million gallons more of water, pipe bone water, are flowing into the homes of our Grenadians at this time. Before the revolution, under 30% of all homes had portable water. The people understand what it means when electrification is brought to their village. The people understand what it means when they know that by the end, the middle of next year, we would have doubled the electricity output and capacity in our country. And therefore, more people would have the possibility of electricity. Our people, therefore, sisters and brothers, have a greater and deeper understanding of what the revolution means and what it has brought to them. They certainly understand very, very clearly that when some people attack us on the ground of human rights, when some people attack us on the ground of constituting a threat to the national security of other countries, our people understand that is foolishness they know the real reason has to do with the fact of the revolution and the benefits that the revolution are bringing to the people of our country. The real reason for all of this hostility is because some perceive that what is happening in Grenada can lead to a new socio-economic and political path of development. They give all kinds of reasons and excuses, some of them credible, some utter rubbish. There's an interesting one that we saw very recently in a secret report of the State Department. I want to tell you about that one. So you can reflect on that one. That secret report made this point, that Grenada is different to Cuba and Nicaragua. And the Grenada Revolution is in one sense even worse, I'm using their language, than the Cuban and Nicaraguan revolutions because the people of Grenada and the leadership of Grenada speaks English 
and therefore can communicate directly to the people of the United States. I can see from your applause, sisters and brothers, that you agree with the report. <laughs> but I want to tell you what that same report also said. And said that also made us very dangerous. And that is that the people of Grenada and the leadership of Grenada are predominantly black. They said that 95% of our population is black, and they had a correct statistic. And if we have 95% of predominantly African origin in our country, then we can have a dangerous appeal to 30 million black people in the United States. Now, that aspect of the report clearly is one of the more sensible ones. <laughs> but, sisters and brothers, how do we evaluate other sides of the report? Like when they say that Grenada violates human rights. When they say to us, how come you have detainees? What about the press? What about elections? When they say to us, where are your elections? They don't turn around at the same time and say to their friends in South Africa, where are your elections? When they say to us that elections must be held, and if you don't have elections, then you can't expect support. And unless you have elections, then we can't give you the normal treatment. We say, Salvador Allende of Chile. Salvador Allende of Chile was elected in September 1970 by the people of Chile. Allende did not take power through a revolution. Allende did not form a militia. Allende did not grab any land or property. Allende had no political detainees. Allende did not crush the press. He did not close down the parliament. He did not suspend the Constitution. He played by every rule they wrote, but they killed him still. <laughs> These people understand very well 
that a revolution means a new situation. Revolution means that the abuses and excesses of the violent, reactionary, and disruptive minority has to be crushed so that the majority interests can prevail. When the Americans had their revolution in 1776, it took them 13 years to call their election. They talk about detainees, but when the American Revolution came in 1776, 600,000 people were detained in this country. 100,000 Americans in the first week of the American Revolution, 100,000 fled to Canada. Thousands were locked up without charge or trial. Hundreds were shot. And the counter-revolutionaries after the American Revolution, they had no right to vote. They had no right to teach. They had no right to preach. They had no right to a job. Their land was confiscated without payment. So when the falsifiers of history try to pretend that the American Revolution was a Boston Tea Party, was a very bloody Tea Party. That's something that very often happens in all revolutions. The spontaneous upheaval of the masses did not really happen in Grenada. A church-based organization in Washington called Epica wrote a book last year on Grenada. They called it Grenada, the peaceful revolution. We can understand why. So when these elements come and make these statements, we understand only too well where they are coming from. They understand that in Grenada, no one is ever interfered with for what he says. No one is ever interfered with for what he writes. In fact, today, criticism is deeper than ever in the society in a constructive way. But our people also understand that the first law of the revolution is that a revolution must survive, must consolidate, so more benefits can come to them. And because of this fact, the revolution has laid down as a law that nobody, regardless of who you are, will be allowed to be involved in any activity surrounding the overthrow of the government by the use of armed violence. And anyone who moves in that direction will be ruthlessly crushed. But we also feel, sisters and brothers, that the time has in fact come for us to make another step along the way towards institutionalizing the process that we have been building for four years. And that is why only yesterday in Grenada, the new chairman of the Constitutional Commission arrived in our capital city, St. George's, from Trinidad and Tobago to announce the formation of the Constitutional Commission that has now undertaken the task of drafting a new constitution for our young revolution. <laughs> this constitution is not really going to look like the one that the Queen gave us <laughs> in 1974. 
This time wrong, this constitution is going to come out of the bowels of our people and out of our earth. Our people will have their inputs and will decide what they want to see go into that constitution. Our new constitution also is certainly going to institutionalize and entrench the systems of popular democracy.